On the show today, we're talking to computers and we're reviewing the Amazon Echo. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Here are your hosts, Nick Rome and Billy Hall. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Nick Rome. I deal with post-it notes for a living and with me I'm joined by today by Mr. Billy Hall. Hi, how's it going today? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. For work, I deal with people because I love the people. Do you love people? I love people all the time. I deal with people too, but today I dealt more with post-it notes than anything. Okay. Passive-aggressive post-it notes, like Cards Against Humanity? Not not passive-aggressive. No, we, uh... Did they we, put in capital letters, get milk, exclamation point? No, we did a big task analysis, uh, breaking down a user's interaction with, a, with an interface. And I'm really drained. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Thank you. I guess I, it's I guess it's Thursday to our listeners. Oh, right, right, right. We, we record these a little bit in advance because we're busy people with busy lives. But, uh, okay, so what are, what are we talking about today? Well, today uh, we're going to be talking about computers as social actors. And, um, you know, this is a field that's kind of taken off in the last couple, couple years. Um you know, that that basically kind of looks at how we interact with uh, computers as, um, y- you know, we, we talk to them a lot. Right. Some A lot of times I use my Google to talk to everything, but are we talking like Mr. Robot or, 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 or Terminator level stuff here? Or are we talking about like my Google app? Uh, you know, we're talking more like the... Uh, the social component of it, right? So just interacting with them, specifically in a voice-based uh, manner, because we're we're talking about the Echo a little later today. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I mean, I guess you know one of the one of the things that we can go into is um, you know, what is an interface? Like I'm looking at this, and I'm telling you're telling me about these things, but what is exactly an interface necessarily? I mean, I always think of it like computer interface which is a screen with little files and you click on mouses and you go to websites and you play games on it like what do you mean by interface right well you're not wrong i mean an interface is basically anything that lets some user interact with a computer or a system or or something really it's just a way for a user to interact with something so this could be this could be anything from uh, you know, you know the button dials on your washing machine or the knobs on your fans. It's really hot out there now, so everyone's yeah, that's an interface. Uh-huh. You're interacting with that device, and you know, as simple as a fan is, you turn the knob and it sets it the speed. Blows air, yeah. That knob is the interface because that is how you're controlling it. Okay, so an interface is kind of anything that makes it so that you know human can contact it. But we're talking about, like, communication, things like that. We're talking about, uh, like, we talk to computers, which sometimes is really cool. Like, when I talk to Google or Siri and they ask me to tell you a joke. and But sometimes it fills me with anger when I, talk, when I call customer support and they have, Hi, how can I help you today? And it's all automated? It's all automated. That drives me insane. Why does that drive you insane? I don't know. Like, I think it's because I like the idea of talking to an actual person. Like, maybe... The computer can't help me as quickly or as efficiently. Doesn't understand what I'm going through. Maybe now, Billy, let me stop you there. Why? Why do you think the computer can't help you? Computers are really smart now. Well, you'd you'd think that maybe they can help you out, right? Well, I mean, like computers. I use a computer every day. I use my cell phone and I use my computer at work. And, and they help like, you out in doing your job. They they do help me out in doing my job. But I mean, when I'm talking to a computer, it feels like I have less control. Okay. Uh, why? Now, why do you? I'm just kind of digging deep into this. Why do you feel like you have less control? What What about it makes you feel like there's no? Well, I mean, like let's go through it. I call something up, 
let's say I have a problem with my, um, I don't know, my phone. Let's okay. call my phone. Okay. So, so I call my phone, and they were like, would you like help? So, hang on. How, okay. are, how are you going to call if you have a problem with your phone? <laughs> if I have a problem with my cellular phone, and okay. I use a landline You're still phone, using a landline? This is 2016, man. I like my landline phone, thank you very much. I don't understand why I have it, but they always hand them to me when you get cable and internet. So... I call somebody up, and they're like, for English, press 1. Blah, 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 press 2. And add the languages that they go down. And I call, press 1. And they were like, well, we're going to help you with that. But then I just kind of spam 0 until I talk to an actual person. Okay. So, so you, just, you just want to get straight to the point. You want somebody to talk to. Right. What if, what if this computer was convincing enough to talk back to you in a way that made you feel... Like it was a human being. Would that... I've seen the movie Her, so I'm not falling into this trap with you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Quit playing on my loneliness, sir. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you have a fiancé. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, but, um... I mean, like... It seems like there's limits to the idea of communicating with it. It seems like there are limits. But why do we talk to computers? Like, why... Why do we use that instead of people? It seems like we would create more, you know, jobs or things like that. If I mean, I know a lot of people who work in tech support and call centers. But right. why do we use computers? Well, that's a matter of automation, right? I mean, if you can automate a job, you save a lot of money. But I think really what you're getting at is, is um, you know, what, what can it take for a computer to successfully fool you or not necessarily fool you, but interact with you in the sense that you you get out of it what you want, um, mm-hmm. you know. And there's a there's this field called computers are social actors. Uh huh. And you know, in this field, it's basically saying that you interact with a computer in the same way that you would interact with a human, or you want to interact with a computer in the same way that you'd interact with a human. So, for example. Um, computers share these uh, sort of social qualities that are very similar to humans. So, you know, for one, when a computer gives you some sort of output, it's mm-hmm. in words, it's in English, mm-hmm. it's, or, or whatever language that you speak, it's, you can read it, and it, it kind of gives you this output. And especially if you're you know, if you have some sort of interface that reads to you or, um, you know, repeats back something to you, so there's a, some audio component to it. If it, you know, if it does this, then it's, it, it, it even more hammers home that point because it, it's words as output. It's not speaking a different language. It's not like you're interacting with a completely foreign thing, right? So that's one of them. There's also the interactivity, right? So this, uh, you interact with humans every right. day, uh, and then you interact with computers probably every day, depending on what you do for your work. Mm-hmm. Or if you're listening to this podcast, you interact with a computer in some capacity. You but went to SoundCloud, you downloaded it, you found it on Facebook, yada, yada, yada. Soon to be on iTunes? Yeah, yeah. We're moving up in the world. Soon. Stay tuned for iTunes. No. <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, c- computers are interactive, right? So they have this component to them that you do, you provide some input, and then you get that output that is recited to you or presented to you in words. Now, there's this third sort of uh, attribute here where it, I mean, we mentioned. You know, uh, that there was this sort of automation component, right? And and the third pillar of this, this field is that, you know, it, it performs human tasks, mm-hmm. right? Now, um, before, you would have something like a librarian pouring through all these articles and and books trying to find the information that you requested. Oh, I love librarians. It's the coolest job in the world, in my opinion. I'm not kidding. I love it. You know who's my favorite librarian? Huh? Google. 
<laughs> no, but there's differences to it. Well, think a about human it. being has can make choices and decisions and 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 correlate data and also look for things that aren't necessarily keywords for deeper meanings and points. Like I mean, like so you're computers right. are getting there, but a human interface. You're right. Um, and this is a really interesting topic. We should really pick up automation in another one of our episodes. Do I keep going to that? You keep going to automation. God, I, I'm, I'm really interested in this now. But we will do that for a future episode. Stay tuned. No, so what you're getting at, though, is that they do... They, they Okay, so they are limited, right? They can't... A computer's main uh, drawback is that they can't analyze in the same way that a human can. And... Mm-hmm. They're getting better and better about this. You know, every day that you go through, or, or every day, you know, there's there's some new breakthrough that allows computers to perform these algorithms that are very similar to the human mind. But what I'm getting at here is that the job of going through and finding everything that might be, you know, if you went to a library, chances are you wouldn't want the librarian to come up with a solution to your problem. You want her or him to go, look, here are the books that might have what you need. Mm-hmm. You go through them and analyze yourself. Mm-hmm. Google does that. It goes through and says, all right, you want something that says this in it. I'm going to go through and find everything with that in it and give it to you. You can analyze. <laughs> so it takes a human job, right? It, t- it takes these these jobs that are traditionally for, for humans to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, I mean, you could you could think of... A lot of different applications. Another one would be like uh, calculating, calculating just in general, right? Okay, like my little TI eighty three calculator. An accountant now TurboTax does all that for you. I know that we're not talking about the idea of robots and automation, but really, it's starting to freak me out how many jobs are being taken by the darn computers. Let's talk about that next episode. I'm sorry, you're right. You're absolutely right, all right. on that one. You heard it here first. We're talking automation next episode. Uh, but I mean, like, we're talking about the idea of like computers as social actors. Now, yeah. what does that mean exactly? So that's that's an entire field, right? That's a subfield. This, these are kind of the pillars that we just talked about, right? Is that it? Uh, computers have these attributes and you know they they basically sort of tell the human how they should interact with these interfaces right Mm -hmm. Um, and so they especially in the in the the context of like voice based interfaces you have sort of this uh, this absent-minded response, right? If I, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but we're talking about the Amazon Echo today. You know, if she says something to you, you say, okay, even if she's not listening. And, right. And, you know, it's stuff like that. See, Alexa, the persona of Alexa is a social actor in the sense that I don't think she's a human, right? So she's not passing, uh, or she's not trying to pass any sort of or she's not trying to fool me in any way but you know I interact with her as, as if she's a human I see what you mean like the idea of it is is that when I use my Google I always say thank you at the end of it just because I'm a polite kind of guy right well the, yeah and I mean you know it all comes down to the social aspect of the computer right so if you if you were to ever go into the text to speech on your computer and put in something dirty or funny or whatever <laughs> and you hear the computer speak it <laughs> it kind of it kind of breaks this appropriateness that you would expect out of a human mm-hmm. right and and the fact that you laugh at it when a computer does it informs you that the computer might have those same standards according to you Hold on a minute. I, I, For those who remember, there used to be a program that was taught in school called Hyper Studios. It was kind of like an early version of PowerPoint, but you could look, make little animations in it, right? That's what I did in junior high. Um, we used to do the same thing because they would have the voice-to-text speech, and we would used to put like ridiculous, silly things like that. But you're saying that it was not funny because I got a computer voice to say these things? It was because of the fact that I was basically... It'd be like if I was saying these things. And yeah, things like yeah, that. I, yeah. It kind of breaks those social 
expectations that you have, right? Even though they're not a human, we're saying here, or this field is saying rather, that computers are social actors and that they should abide by these social rules, right? Oh, God. So, like, something as, you know, as benign, well, not, it's not benign. Let's be real here. Gender stereotyping is not benign. But that's a thing that you do with computers, right? So there have been a ton of studies on how we perceive different voices. Mm -hmm. And some of them are negative. Some of them are positive. I'm going to focus here more on the positive, though. So, like, there's been a study where, um, and this was done in 1997, where they kind of looked at what humans were expecting for these or, or or I guess okay so they talked about these these topics mm-hmm. and the female gender was more it was considered the female gender voice was considered more of an expert in things like love and relationships and the male voice was uh seen as being more proficient in like technical skills uh over the female voice so just the matter of who you choose to speak will alter your opinion on how much you can trust that computer but then why do we on all our gps's have a female automated voice you can change it to male can you in a lot of cases you can there's you know and and there's different preferences right you can you can uh like I want an Australian male, I want an Australian female, I want an, uh, a UK male, I want a UK female, I want a US male, a US female. There's all these different things, right? And I know anecdotally, mm-hmm. when I'm in my car, um, I'm going to go off on a slight tangent here. Okay, go on. Because I'll go is, down this brick road with you. Let's right. do this. This is the first time I've really mentioned how much I love Star Wars on the show. Mm-hmm. Well, really? We've been like... This We've is our like third, third episode. episode, and you still have. You're right. I'm proud of you. You know what? I've been refraining, but if you seriously have any Star Wars questions, send them my way. I probably won't answer them on the show, but I'd be more than happy to talk. Maybe to you. we'll do like a Star anyway, Wars cast. Let's bring it back in. <laughs> I would love to do a Star Wars podcast. I listened to a couple of them: uh, Rebel Force Radio, Collider's Jedi Council. Anyway, if you, you guys want to have me on the show, one episode, right? <laughs> Okay, let's bring it back in. So we're talking about GPS apps and voices and computers as social actors. So Mm -hmm. there's a reason why I brought up Star Wars. So a couple months ago when The Force Awakens was coming out, Mm -hmm. Waze came out with um, a... It's it's like a voice pack. And Anthony Daniels, the voice of C-3PO, was able to navigate me to the premiere of The Force Awakens. And I just thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. But... Do, does he ever time? It's like, odds are you'll see this to your left, so you could just tell him... Never, never tell, tell me the odds! odds. <laughs> never tell me the odds. No, he, uh... You know... In seven meters, turn left. That was oh, a terrible... Okay. Okay. That was a terrible Anthony Daniels impression, but... Just go it was, with it. No, Own it was it. really cool. Own anyway, it. anyway. Um, no, so yeah, I mean, they, they have these attributes to them, and, and you know, there's... There's a couple other ones, like reciprocity, right, where you have... Uh, you know, it it does something for you, so you're you feel more inclined to do something for. Sir, I am not a college educated man. You're using those five dollar reciprocity words, and that's making me reciprocitist. Did I use that right? Reciprocitist. Damn it! So close. I don't. Well, I what don't even know. What does reciprocity mean? Reciprocity means I give you something, you give me something back. Oh. Um... Right. And so when a computer will give you help or um, some sort of benefits, right? This this invokes in the humans a mindless response uh, that kind of make them feel like they're obligated to help the computer, right? Right. So, wait a minute. So, is that why I'm angry at the computer? Because I feel like I have to control the computer? Am I a computer racist? You might also be angry at the computer because you gave the computer something, but they didn't give you something back. Am I racist against computers? I don't know. Oh, no. Are you? Oh, no. I've got to have a serious conversation with Siri when I get done with this. <laughs> right. And then, so there. this is, uh, this next point kind of comes back to what we were talking about earlier with 
the different voices that you can use in the GPS, right? So there's there's personality personification. Mm-hmm. Um, pee-pee. I'm not going to... Damn. <laughs> pee-pee. You're a monster. You looked at me, and now everybody's going to think I started laughing over pee-pee. You did laugh over pee-pee. That's because you gave me that look, that knowing look of big smile grin that you have. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk. Right. And so, so uh, you know, this is, this is basically that they expect... Com- or you, can, you can personalize the computers to do basically any sort of personality that you want, right? This, is, this comes back to the, I like the, um, the British voice, I like the Australian voice, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and there have been studies that looked at, like, dominance, like, you, you like a dominant voice for some things and not such a dominant voice for other things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, for example, like, if it's asking you to do a task, you want somebody that sounds dominant, so that way, as you perform the task, you're more likely to sort of respect the computer as an authority. But anyway, I think that's a good segue for us to talk about, you know, what we're reviewing. And, uh, Billy, what are we reviewing today? We are going to be doing the Amazon Echo. What is that? The I know Amazon, we've, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but yeah. what is the Echo? The Amazon Echo is this really cool device that everybody seems to love. It's a voice-enabled wireless speaker, and it's developed by Amazon. It's actually on my wedding registry. I'm really excited about this thing. It's something that you own, I do. and that we have tons of fun on when we're over voice chat on games and things. Yeah, so I do own one of these, um, and I like it. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're we're reviewing it now, so you'll kind of get get a sense of how I feel with it. And and I've been living with uh, Alexa, um, as she's so endearingly called around the house, um, and and that's one of the wake words. Basically, so this this device is always listening and say what you want about the NSA, but they've been great so far. Um, I'm just kidding. The, the NSA haven't really contacted. Me. <laughs> Took you a second. It's okay. <laughs> no, we're, no, we're I was catch- waiting for you. We're I still- was waiting for it. Okay. Um, Swinging around. But, I mean, okay, so one of the things I wanted to actually ask about um, Alexa is is that uh, I looked at all the reviews, because I don't own one yet. I've looked at the okay. reviews, I've looked at the videos for it, and things like that. How is Alexa one of these actors you told, you're, we've been talking about? Right. Because this is one of those topics that are really close to home about it. Yeah. So Alexa, uh, kind of, it's well. First off, it's a voice-based interface. Mm-hmm. So there is no screen. Mm-hmm. There are a couple hard buttons on the thing. There's a knob to adjust the volume. There's a button to engage the microphone mm-hmm. to listen to you. And there's a mute button so the microphone can't hear you. That's it. Everything else is done by voice. Let me throw this idea out here. Yeah. You were just talking about a little bit earlier how the what we put in, we get out of the voice, right? Like, you know, you I get upset about talking to a person because I feel the need of not maybe getting something back, right? Right, reciprocity. Reciprocity. Echo seems to be, give you nothing but reciprocity. Yeah, no, it, it's great. Um, and I, I really want to... Like reserve my judgment for the end of this review, and I'm trying not to go into it. You know, to to well, let's get through the review okay. then. All let's right. get through the review so, so that we can talk about it more openly, so people can make a so, more clear decision. So what's up first? Visibility of system status. Right. I am. I as a user know what's going on. Right. Uh, right off the bat, you know. Okay. So one thing again with our reviews, it does not necessarily mean the product is bad mean the product is bad this is just us going through these industry standards Mm -hmm. um you know in terms of interfaces so for this though visibility of system status as a user i know what's going on sometimes yes uh, most of the time no so for example there's no display with this there's there's maybe a verbal display Mm -hmm. right like um you know uh, for that, like, you can ask Alexa, what can I do, right? right and that's right, a verbal right. display. That's an audible display. So you, you actually process this information, and you have to 
remember, I'm jumping ahead. But anyway, so there is no <laughs> there is no visibility because you can't see it. Okay, yeah. Now, now that's there are a few things that Alexa does, or sorry, Echo that the Amazon Echo does that, uh, and you'll you'll hear me refer to her it as Alexa or Echo interchangeably. Um, but but one of the things it does do really well is that it lets you know when it's listening. So when you say Alexa, right, or whatever uh-huh. the wake word is, you can't customize that uh, wake word, but we'll get to that later. When you say Alexa, you see a blue ring around her thing light up, at, and, you know, it points in the direction that it's hearing the voice. Oh, that uh, is so cool. So so you can you can tell whether it's listening to you or listening to the TV, right? So if I were to say Alexa and I'm watching TV and then somebody says something, she's clearly listening to the TV and not me because it's too loud. Oh, that's really interesting. Now there's also there's also it uh, the ring also glows red when you're not connected to Wi Fi. So uh, you know, it kinda gives you that that sense. Uh, or or when you when you give her a command and she can't interact with See, this is this is really amazing to me, by the way, just that I'm referring to this device as her. Okay. She is personified. <laughs> that's oh, that's another point I didn't mention earlier is that computers refer to themselves as I and me. They they address uh themselves. I've never thought about that. Right? They address themselves as a being instead of a unit. Holy crap, you're right. Anyway, back on track here. So so yes, in terms of visibility, there's not a whole lot to look at, but what there is, it does really well. Okay. Uh, What's up next? A match between the system and the real world. I, as a user, know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I mean, um, for the most part, the uh, the Echo does this pretty well, right? You can you can ask uh, Alexa, you know, what it is that you want. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and she'll tell you. The problem with this is that there's um, and and you know, asking in real world plain English is as simple you can get, or real world. I'm not sure if the Alexa's localized. That'd be really interesting to look at. Well, I mean, Siri had a bunch of problem in Scotland because she couldn't get used to the brogue. Right. I mean, how is Alexa in the rest of the world? I mean, all the reviews yeah. I looked were local. I don't know. That's hmm. that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, in terms of these interfaces, yeah, it does it does match up to what you're you're uh, you'd expect, right? It's a social actor. She'll respond to you in the way that a human would. I can do all these things. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, well, speaking of all the things that she can do, the next one is user control and freedom. Oops. Uh, oops. Let me out of here. So, like, what we have with user control and freedom, emergency exit. Right. So this is um, this is kind of like the undo or redo. And, you know, for, in, in terms of this one, it's, it's okay. Uh, you know, so my main sort of issue with this one is, like, when, um, well, let me, let me back up from the main issue. So what you can do with her... Mm-hmm. Is you can say okay. Uh, in any situation, whenever she starts talking, you can say Alexa, stop, or Alexa, shut up, or Alexa, whatever. I've heard a few times you yelling at Alexa. Yeah, I mean, how does she respond to that? She's great. She doesn't say anything. <laughs> she does exactly what you want, right? I ask her to do something. She well, that idea of reciprocity. I ask for something and she gives it. Right. And then that's the thing I wanted to talk I give about because three with user control and freedom, the number three on it, right? The one of the things that I was thinking about here is is your interactions are so 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 short, so brief. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, um, look, the thing here is that. What what you're getting at is that um, you know you can always you can always get out of things. That's mm-hmm. that's the user control and freedom. Now, when that breaks down, is when uh, and and you know she does a good job of of like when you're controlling something. Mm-hmm. She um, you can. 
So, for example, if you're listening to a song, you can say Alexa previous, Alexa next, and she'll play the previous song or the next song. So it lets you out of a situation. It lets you into the next situation. It does a really good job there. My biggest gripe with this is that when your volume is too high, she doesn't cancel herself out well enough to hear you screaming at it. So you're playing... (laughs) Ha! I remember these situations. (laughs) Yeah, so you're playing something... And you're yelling at it, Alexa, stop! Alexa, stop! Alexa, stop! You got a, I, you were funny angry. Funny angry in that one. That was funny. Yeah, I get funny angry. Oh, God, right. I remember that. That was great. Yeah, okay. so that's my big gripe. Well, that's fair. I mean, that's understandable. Okay, so consistency and standards. Seems familiar and makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, what's the standard for voice uh, sort of interfaces, right? There's, I would say Siri. Off the top of my head... The standard is Siri, because Apple's kind of the first person who perfected it. So there's, yeah, so there's there's Google and Siri. Mm-hmm. And Cortana, but she was a little late on the game. Right, well, and so, so okay, so we're talking about these other, and that's another interesting thing, too. They name these. Cortana, Siri, Google is the only one that doesn't. Well, yeah, but I think it's part of the reason is is that... Um, you see Google as an oracle. No, I mean, the people <laughs> who are making these things... The people who are making... I'm just going to go off really quick here. The people who are making these systems are the people who grew up with sci-fi, science, and that sort of stuff. We grew up with artificial intelligence, you know, the doctor from Voyager. Uh, what is the nature of your medical emergency? Kit. Or, or Kit from Knight Rider. How? Or, or How or Cortana from uh, Halo. Halo. You know, we grew up with these things. Of course we humanize them because it makes us feel more fancy. Because we're never... I'm, I'm never going to have the fully automated robot waifu that come to my door to clean my house like I dream about. You know what's really, really funny, though, that you mention all this stuff? Mm. It, these developers are, like, super into this stuff. Because if you say, Alexa, close the pod bay doors... Should be like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I mean, <laughs> cell phones came from Star Trek. Fact. Okay, cell phones came or from the Star idea, Trek. At least. Or at least the idea. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, but I always assumed that when we actually made Star Wars, that was a thing. But I mean, these are things that we actually discuss. These are things we actually talk about, and I think that's why we kind of humanize them. Now, I'm not an expert. But that's the thing. That's the other thing. Uh, the one of the problems that separates it here is actually the next one recognition rather than recall. I know what I need to do here. How much can Alexa help you with that? So, uh, flat out, it sucks for this because, so again, you ask her, Alexa, what can you do? And she'll give you, I can do this, 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 and this. For more information, see your Alexa manual. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I, it's, it's hard for me to recall what options I have available when I, you know, when I haven't seen a list or something. So let me just give you a little anecdote here. So when I first bought the Amazon Echo, mm-hmm. I was getting really into home automation. Um, and yeah, we really need to do an automation episode next episode. I think I think that's said and done. <laughs> uh, so when you know when I when I got this, I was into home automation, and I got the Echo. So that I can start saying, uh, turn off the lights or turn on the TV, change it to this channel. Uh, what's the weather like today? All these things. Right. What's on my calendar. Right. And, and, you know, play my music and all this stuff. And so I got the Echo for all these reasons. And now I use it for exactly two. I use it to turn on and off the lights. Mm-hmm. And I use it to play music occasionally. But I have forgotten. It has a ton of different skills that you can do with it. You can order an Uber. You can listen to the news. You can um, find out what Zur is selling in Destiny. I hear you can even actually put like use Amazon on it and replace orders of things you need. You can yeah, it's shopping acts lists that go to your app effectively as a dash button. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I I use it for two things. I use it for playing music. And I use it for turning off the lights. Hmm. I mean... 
But that's the thing about it. When you first got her, I remember when you first set her up and everything like that. I was talking to her every every day. And every was... day. And the thing about it is, is that you were interacting with her. Right. Like, I was discovering what she could do, what Easter egg she had. And a lot of these, you know, I got from, like, the Reddit. Like, oh, there's an Easter egg here. Right. Oh, we'll say it. And I, you know, I, they're really good about not really revealing what she says in response to it. That's I, really nice. You know, so you have to go home and ask her these questions. But... I mean, but that's one of the things with that, uh, with the, um, next thing is, is that it can do so many things. So flexibility and efficiency of use. Right. So this is, uh, like I said, it can do a lot of things, right? And, mm-hmm. and we're here, we're talking about allow me to do more for less. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, you can, you can activate a skill, right? So the Alexa and Amazon have these things called skills that, you can enable to have her do things. So, like the Uber, call an Uber is mm-hmm. a skill. Now, there is some flex, or there's there's some freedom there in the sense that you can you can download these apps, and you can you can do a lot of different things with them. But it's not very flexible. You it, you have to say it in the structure, right? So it will. It, like for example, I'm not sure if this is the syntax, so don't send me any messages about this. I don't, I don't want to get any more of those. <laughs> but no, like, uh, like for example, you could say Alexa, ask Uber to order me an Uber. Right? That's the syntax. That's the syntax. Okay. Uh, or uh, this one I know for sure. So there's a Destiny app on there, right? That allows you. To, to check out some of the status on, on Destiny and, and um, you know the the syntax for that is Alexa, ask my ghost to ask Zer what he's selling today I see what you're saying so it's not natural, right? right. so you can't customize like Alexa what's Zer selling what's today? what's Zer selling today? you also can't like um you, there's not so much flexibility with your control either. So the, I have these lights. They're the Philips Hue. They can change colors, but you can't change the colors through voice. You have to do that through the separate app. You, you, can, you can't be like, Alexa, change my lights red. Now, one of the questions is you mentioned that you have a bunch of these different skills and these apps that you can do. Right. So do you have to download separate apps, or is it all within the Alexa app? It's all within the Alexa app, but there's you have to enable enable them separately. So it's not like they come defaultly enabled. You can't just be like, ask Domino's to order me a pizza. You would have to download you'd have the to, Alexa Domino's app. You'd have to basically. It's just in. You basically just have to go into the system and say enable. Now I think, oh okay. I think they did add it so where you can say, you know, Alexa enable this skill and she'll download the necessary software that she needs for that um i tried doing it with the daily show the other night but i haven't tested it since she's just like check back in a couple minutes and i did and it wasn't done yet so i haven't checked Mm. back since i'll do that tonight though (laughs) okay so one of the things also they do is aesthetics one of the things we talk about is aesthetics and minimalist design and to be honest with you I always felt like Amazon was really good at doing this sort of thing. Like, with all their apps and their little creations. Like, like I use the Audible and everything else. And I've seen pictures of Alexa, and Alexa looks very sleek and simplistic. You can't really get more, much more simplistic than a... Um, tube. Than a tube. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the new Apple Pro, too. You know what, though? In terms of, like, looks good, yes, it does. Works beautifully, eh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it like a like a not not a free pass on this one because sometimes she'll mishear you, sometimes she won't hear you, sometimes she'll oh god this was so annoying. So the other night I said, Alexa, turn off the lights, because uh-huh. uh, I was going to bed, and then she starts blasting music like from a, <laughs> from a band called Lights, and I was like, all right. Well, I mean, I like me some lights, but... She's going through those toddler years. <laughs> but right now, I want you to turn off the lights. <laughs> now playing, you're as cold as ice. <laughs> so, no. So Don't she, leave me alone in the dark. <laughs> she, she, she does do some of those things. It's kind of annoying, but... Um, 
you know, and that kind of goes with the next point, right? Which is the uh, recognize, diagnose, and recover yeah, from Yeah, I know what went wrong, and I can fix it. Now, I don't know how the Alexis UI interface works, but... Alexa, uh, stop. That's it. That's it. That's all you get. Is that a good thing or a bad no, thing? No, it's great. Unless she can't hear you. But, I mean, like, how many times... Okay, how many times have you been listening to this podcast and they're like, Nick and Billy, stop. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, we should do that real quick. We should be in the middle of a sentence and And just... then I'd be like, did you guys just do it? I know you're following along. I know you're doing it. <laughs> we gave you... We gave you... This the is interactive guy. podcast. I interactive mean, podcast. My gosh. Just not... No, but how many times do you wish you had that in uh, interpersonal communication? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, Billy in a stop. lot of things. See? That's, ah! exactly, that's amazing. Okay, so, I mean, that's really great then. Uh, and then help and documentation. Now, this thing seems to come with a manual, have an app, well, yeah, subreddit the, on there. The manual's in the app. Uh-huh. Um, and you could ask for help, too. So you can... You can say, Alexa, what can you do? Alexa, how do I do this? Or whatever. And she'll she'll tell you. Now, the downside to this is that you can't dig for specific information just by interfacing with the uh, audio portion, right? You have to actually dig um, into the app and mm-hmm. find out what you're looking for or look it up. One on of Reddit. the things that I was reading, because I read a lot of the reviews on it from Amazon, just to get a kind of an idea of what the overall thought of it was, and one of the thi- one of I looked at the one star reviews, which are very f- which are few, but they're still there. One of the things is is it's really hard to see if a particular part is messed up. Like, is it the power cord? Is it the whole system? Is it just the speaker? You know, individual things. It's really hard to troubleshoot individual things with Alexa. Now, I don't own an Alexa, and heaven forbid she ever dies on you. Yeah, but- I mean, like here's here's one thing is it's really annoying. Um, I wish it came with some, like, off, offline capability, right? Like, sometimes it'll disconnect from the Internet when Internet's shoddy or whatever. And, and, you know, I'll say, Alexa, are you connected to the Internet? And she'll just go, boom, I can't understand you right now. Please try again later. That's like, okay, that answers my question, but I just want you to talk to me in a human voice. Talk to me, say, no, I'm not connected to the Internet right now. Please try again in a couple minutes. I'm sorry she's having trouble communicating. This woman in your life is having trouble communicating. I know. <laughs> All right. All right. So what's your thoughts on this? Overall, what are your thoughts on this thing? You know what? It's it's an interesting thing, and we're at the cusp of a revolution when it comes to these voice interfaces. I mean, I think the most incredible part about the Amazon Echo is that she's always listening. And... You know, as creepy as that is, you guys are always listening, too. No. So I don't really have a problem with it. No, but the interesting thing is that you can ask for anything at any time. Like, I was watching Arrested Development the other night, and I was like, I, I asked my girlfriend, I was like, hey, you know, what? who's Will Arnett married to in real life? And she's like, I don't remember. And then I asked Alexa, and she was able to answer it for me while I was watching Arrested Development. Okay. And it's pretty interesting. And, and, you know, it's just these these uh, these on-the-fly questions that you have that you would ask Google, right? Like, Yeah, my phone. And, and she does a great job of or answering. Or Siri if you have Apple. Now, the the passive presence, I think, is where this, this thing shines. And like I said, there's going to be a revolution soon to where you can just talk in your house and your house will understand what you want. It's crazy. Um, Man, but in I terms can't of, imagine how crazy property value is going to do, go up when it actually look that. But I mean, you know, I, I'm going to reserve some judgment uh, right now. And we're still in the infancy, so there's a lot of bugs that it has to work out. But you know, for what it is, it's pretty pretty interesting. See, my overall thought about it, it it's it's a cool concept, and I'm going to be the weird one in this situation and say it's a niche. It's a right it's a little thing. It's not I have my phone. It's like I'm getting an extra thing to do another thing. I I feel like I'm I would just be stacking it upon it. Now, I don't own one. I don't own one. I do have one on the registry because it's a gimmick. It's cool. But and if it was I, thank God, it's like uh 100 bucks cuz anything more than 100 bucks, I don't think I would ever bother with it. 
It's like 180, just so you know. No, it's 100 bucks right now. It was 100 bucks for uh, Prime Day. Oh, really? Yeah, it's back up to 180. I thought it went down in price. Anyway. Uh, don't send us emails about the price either. We don't. I you know, really we check know. later. But I mean, like, I feel that it gets, like, it's cool, but it's a little gimmicky. I think I'm waiting for a her situation or maybe a, a cell You'll phone that in, becomes all in all. You'll fall in love with Scarlett Johansson's voice. I have already have. Let's be honest oh, yeah. here, sir. Sorry, Kia, I love you. You're, yeah, anyway. <laughs> all right. So, so this is the part of the show where we take the questions from you guys, our listeners. And if you want to be featured on the show, please, please, please send us in your questions. We've got some great ones so far. We're all over the social medias. You can find us at Human Factors Cast. Uh, go ahead and comment on our SoundCloud or send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail. Billy, what's our question today? Our question today comes from, let's see here, Chris in Utah sent us an email. All right. Chris writes, why are car UIs so bad? Now, I don't know because I don't own a smart car. Well, you don't. Okay, so... I don't have the little computer interface or anything like that. Well, remember, we were talking about interfaces today, right? And an interface isn't necessarily a smart interface. We're talking about, like, the knobs. Uh, okay, so, like, even the knobs and the little flashy lights and the little pictograms that show up in my car it does feel a little dated when I say pictograms. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a whole nother show is that we are... <laughs> we're just generating show ideas today. Seriously, this should have been a vamp meeting, but go on. I know. Anyway, so, yeah, no, I mean, just because... Uh, like, Pick why are these UIs well, so bad? You know, it, you know, I don't think it's necessarily the... I guess it depends on your experience, right? So, although every car that I've been behind has had a bad UI. So I, I get I get where Chris is coming from here. <laughs> right? Okay. I mean, okay. <clears throat> you know, they're really confusing, even though they try to simplify things. And, and to be honest, Chris, I don't have an answer for you. Um... I mean, I would, I would suspect, <clears throat> this is what I would suspect. I would suspect that these car dealerships often are trying to sort of, um, or, or not the dealerships, I'm sorry, the manufacturers, they have obviously these technical components that they have to meet, right? Like they have to do X, Y, and Z as a requirement, right? This car has to have Bluetooth. This car has to have... Um, like automatic shifting this car has to have manual shifting in the same car my car has that it's really weird how do these things interact together well we're going to leave that up to our ui designers and our ux designers so yeah. so what it comes down to we is really got to get a ui ux designer in here we do uh, uh we'll you, go on. you know what it comes down to though is is that there are these technical requirements that drive how the user interfaces have to interact with them right so like I don't think car interfaces are necessarily bad, right? When you think about... I mean, I, I don't understand the difficulty of a car interface. I mean, you know, I maybe it's because I'm left-handed and everything, because I'm in the driver's seat, everything's on my right side. If you're in the U.S. Oh, that's true. I mean, but I can't speak for those other places. Right. But I mean, like, I understand what everything says in my car and everything that's going on. You know what I mean? Like, I understand what a, the blinking light means. I understand what the little warning signals mean. I understand what all the knobs on my thing does. I can easily access them, but that's because I grew up around them. I've been driving for 15, 16 plus years. Now, let me ask you, though, like, does it always work the way you want it to? So let me just give you an example. Okay. So in my car, I have a very fancy 2015 Toyota Corolla. <gasps> Oh my You're god! You're so fancy. I know. Rolling this is what hu human practitioners roll around on. <laughs> High <laughs> quality. Rolling in the podcast, though. Um, so <laughs> basically, okay. Hold up. Let's reel it in. We're gonna talk about this example. Mm -mm. So, I have this sort of wheel on my steering wheel that is like four buttons. It's up, down, left, and right, and a center button for enter, and when I want to advance to the next track, you would expect that the right button would advance the track, would you not? Because that's a standard. You hit right for next, left for back. Yeah, okay. Okay? To, yeah. Ad to advance to the next track, I have to hit up. Right seeks. So right 
you like fast forward through whatever you're listening Doesn't to. That... Now that makes sense, but it's like why? Like I don't. Would that? But why? Why up for next? Why not down? Like I would understand down a little bit better than up because down. If you're going down a list, right? The next one on the list, right? That at least I can get. But why up? So I get I get Chris's gripe here with car UIs. Answer is I don't know. But for now, that's got to be the end of the show. I know it's a little bit shorter one today, but next week we'll have a lot to talk about with automation. Oh. Did you just get something? No, I just, I'm trying to just figure out what you're talking about. Wouldn't that be like that weird thing, like um, ergonomics? We'll have a whole nother show on ergonomics. Yay! Generating ideas! <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me at linkedin.com slash nickrome. Billy Hall, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at comstarclaret. Until next time, it's the best!